Lake Township in Grand Lake City on Thursday, April 27th, and would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, first off, um, could we please uh, have Chris uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thomas, trustee. Earl Gusek, Township Treasurer. Clark Kent, Township Trustee. Mike Blondell, Fire Commission City. Thank you very much. At this time, we'd like, uh, if there's any public comment, to uh, we'd like to address the joint boards. To stand up and we'll hand you the mic and we'll give you three minutes to uh, speak. Mr. Earl? Am I the only, uh, I probably speak loud enough. I don't know. I'm probably the only public comment here, I mean. Okay, my name is Ed Ertz, 7212 Porter Road. I just want to go over a couple of things here. Uh, at the end of 2008, there was a fire in the city. That was big boys. The response time was very slow to it. 2009, we talked about a fire manager. I think that's what expired, that's my opinion. 2010, we had a millage. Prior to the millage, an interesting one. There we go. Can anybody, everybody hear me? Okay. Prior to the millage, the township's portion of the funding for the fire department was 75 percent. The city paid 25 percent. Then we'll round that off. It'd be off a half percent or so. Now it's 86 percent and 14 percent. That seems to be quite a deal for the city at the township's expense. I don't think getting more millage money is going to solve any problem. Especially when you talk about the township and its growth. It'll only create more disparity between the funding for the fire department. Currently, the act that we operate under the fire commission is basically a 50-50 split. So you're talking about people that are funding 86-14, but they get represented at 50-50. That's really not wrong, right for today. Because there's 8,000 people in the city and there's 36,000 people in the township. That leaves, if you go to equal funding, that leaves 28,000 people not represented, or 36,000 people that are spread amongst two representatives on that board. I don't think the township was represented on the commission. I realize the commission, you have to do that. I think maybe we're operating under the wrong path. I'm curious what I'm curious about liabilities and ownership is. If the contributions 8614 is the liabilities and contribute are liabilities and ownership 8614. I heard at one time it was 2575. So I think we've got to, we've got to get that straightened out. And the time bar 
As far as millage is concerned, I would say there's no reason for a tie bar. Each municipality has their own need and way of doing business and funding sources. Tie barring things is kind of like kicking the can like we did last time. We're right back here where we were in 2009 talking about millage. I also feel that Station 1 is inadequate for our firefighters and the township's needs. I, I, I see a, a face look at me funny. If we want to get a, a, a large uh, ladder truck in there, we can't. There's other things that can't be done in the city. The firefighters are housed in a basement. They only have a window they can look out. I mean, I can go on and on forever, so I just want to make a general statement that's inadequate. In closing, I think we've solved the fire problem with big boys in the city if we have response time and full-time firefighters of 2008. At the township's expense, we're paying the same thing we've done in less. You get ready to cut me off. <laughs> yeah, one little sentence. Now it's time to solve the real problems and not just throw money at it from the township. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay. We will close public comment. Thank you for your comments. In talking with uh, the mayor and uh, city manager, uh, our superintendent and myself, been in a couple of meetings and uh, came up with the agenda. And you'll see the first item on the agenda um, is regarding the current model uh, for joint fire protection and prevention. We'd like to spend a, a few minutes on this. And, uh, um, you know, we all have our opinion on, on whether or not that's working or not. But uh, I think, Mr. Barnes, would you uh, like to comment to the commission on, on that? Which part of you? Sorry. In terms, of, in terms of just the current model or the chief, I'm the chief is going to speak to that. Chief speak to that. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I'm up. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, good evening. Thank you for coming in this evening to listen to me talk for the next 45 minutes. I'll keep it brief. I'll go to ten. Well, I got to go over here. <sighs> didn't put down the tape for the I'm sorry. I'm well away from this now. Okay. Um, All right. Presently, model for the fire department. Let me move over here. Uh, there we go. Presently, the fire department is staffed by a combination of full and part-time fire Behind you are all, you know, most of the part-time firefighters and a couple of our full-time staff, uh, dedicated individuals that are there day in and day out to handle the situations that we're called upon to take care of. Uh, as you can see up uh, here, uh, first thing I just want to mention is that back in 2010, we started collecting the village. In 2013, we were able to start hiring and start staffing the station 24 hours a day, around the clock, seven days a week. In 2016, the fire department responded to 692 incidents. It's quite a few. Back in 2010, just before we started the village, we only responded to a little over 400, about 422 incidents to be exact. So there's quite a bit of a difference. What caused that difference? It's the people being at the station. We're being called upon to do more things during the day. And before, the police were handling it, the city and the township police department, now it's being handled by the appropriate departments, the fire department can handle. We were able, we were, uh, with bringing this millage on, we were tasked with a few things. One was improve the services of the fire department to the general public and stabilize funding. Improving the services, we've accomplished that. Just as an example, the first graph up there, our response times. Before we started, the full-time staffing in 2010. Our travel time to an incident was six minutes. Our in-route time, or the time it takes for the minute we get the call 
to get the truck out of the station and start driving was right around seven minutes on average. Today, that truck travel time was about the same, six to six point four minutes, but the en route time is dramatically less. In less than two minutes, we have a truck out of the station starting to respond to the call. So we in essence taken the dispatch or en route time, response time, and cut it in half. And that started immediately. We've also increased the amount of property that we save. By getting there faster, the fires aren't able to get as large as they have been. The graph here just shows we've increased it by 2%. It's almost like a small margin, but depending upon what that fire occurred in those two years, it could be a big, ch a big change. Recently, just this week, I was notified that the Insurance Safety or Services Offices, ISO, granted us a, or received a new audit rating. We improved. We went from a six to a five. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means as a homeowner or a business owner, your insurance premium should be dropped. How much, I don't know. Okay. Working on that. But it is going to decrease. Okay, from going to the next one. Oh, there is another one. Okay. One other graph that was. Which one do you want? Uh, oh, it's uh, the, that's the inspection one. The inspection one is in? Inspection side, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, one other thing that we've recently done. In 2010, our fire inspections that the fire department performed was a little over 300. Today, in 2016, down to 144. Why is there such a variance? Well, we went from three people doing inspections in 2010 to one. And this person handles a lot more than just inspections. Plan reviews, site reviews, public education, as well as responding to fires. So there's a lot more on that person's plate. So as we talk a little bit later about a fourth full-time position, which is what we originally planned for, and in order to meet our goals monetarily over the years, we've never filled a position. It's been open. We initially had it filled, but through attrition, people leaving, the fire chief leaving, uh, by appointment, we've never filled that fourth position, we've left it open. We've been robbing Peter to pay Paul to get everything taken care of. There's a, multiple other examples that we're still working on to improve our services to the community. So, that's my 45 minute spiel, and I'm sorry, I got it down to 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, congratulations on that uh, improved ISO rating. Those are, are huge uh, achievements. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> so, as Chief Burdett uh, stated, uh, with regard to our goals and reducing response times, we've achieved that. Um, item C that uh, we talked about, we talked a little bit about the combination of full time and paid on call. We've included a few things in your packet. Uh, you'll see that the we have uh, right after the agenda the, the agreement that we're working off of for the commission. And then you'll see uh, some minutes from a meeting that was held on August 6, uh, 2010. And if you turn that page over, you'll just see a few things that uh, were highlighted from that meeting before going to the next section. You're going to give you some background that, uh, with regard to data, with regard to the Grand Lake Fire Department back in 2010, some assumptions. One was that uh, the capital equipment fund is currently underfunded by $189,000. Number two needs about $346,000 annually to meet replacement costs for equipment, breeding, and ISI packs. And then number four, uh, to decrease response time from this average of 12 minutes to seven and a half minutes, which we've been successfully working on, and it requires an estimated 708,000. So those are some of the, the assumptions that we're working on. And then down below, the goal is for the city and township taxpayers to pay the same rates for the fire service. So that was the goal back in 2010. Okay. With that, I guess um, we also included a form that we. 
for the back. Okay. Yep. There's, a, there's a form that we included that looks like this. I'll put it up on the screen here in just a second. But one of the things that we wanted to do at the beginning of the meeting is talk about some of the uh, we call them assumptions or things that we want to kind of lay out where we see the funding for these items coming from. So if you look at, for example, builder repairs, um, we have roofs, you know, overhead doors, HVAC, and then whose responsibility would that would be for? My <coughs> correct, Dennis, if you don't, we laid that out. So I guess if we want to start out with uh, building repairs, um, we can talk a little bit about that. I think uh, in the agreement, it, it states that uh, uh, there's a think, On page number five, you'll see financing of the fire commission, and you'll see kind of the layout of that, the operation agreement by the fire commission will be funded by the 10-year approved and half mill. And then section three, all, all major operating capital purchases and expenses, including compensation and benefits, and everything should be paid from this budget. However, we, we know that hasn't always been the practice uh, over the years. Uh, we've got the fire tower that we spent considerable money on. The city's had roofs that they had considerable expense. So I guess what we need to do is, as we're, and I don't expect us to walk out of here today, I don't think the mayor does with all the answers, but uh, we want to start the, the conversation because we do have a millage coming up in the next two years, probably need to resolve this in the next six months, I would guess, to get on the ballot time. But anyways, uh, we we wanted to see if we could come to some type of agreement on a few things, and maybe responsibility for funding on this chart is one area we can start this evening. So I'll, I'll open it up to uh, anyone to talk about any one of these items to see who we think. I mean, we'll have to come up with an agreement on millage and the other. Yes, Mayor. I, I think one thing we should go to the chief again to um, see who's been paying for what, because I don't think it's clear what you're paying for out of your budget, and that should be clarified first, and then go to, because we all know we put our individual monies in for, you know, our roof and, you know, your tower, and then going forward, you know, where we are, because sure. there was a capital improvement line that I don't think at the beginning was funded, the 15000 that was supposed to be used for these type of improvements that was supposed to come out of the budget. Well, the best way that I can respond to that yeah, is that it's, it's somewhat inconsistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, it, if it's a major structural repair, um, I would, I'm assuming that both the city or the township is taking care of their own structures. If we're talking about internal items, you know, we've replaced the boiler at station one, we've had uh, lights uh, put in at station number two, and so on, uh, that, that's where we just need to get clarification on it. Well, who, who will be responsible for funding that, those repairs and upgrades that we need to have done? And I, I understand that. I just wanted um, some clarification as to um, the line item for capital improve excuse me, capital improvements at all buildings was the fifteen thousand dollars per year. And I know that there was some, you know, there it didn't always happen, but I thought it started to happen in the last year's budget and we were making up for that with um, some of the improvements made. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't aware that the capital improvement was for um, making building improvements okay, or uh, maintenance items. Okay. That, that was my understanding. Yeah. So, and, Chris, and this that, was all talked about when I wasn't at those meetings or anything. Right, and that's some clarification, but, sure. but that was part of the thing. So okay. when, when I look at this, and for everybody to you know look at it together, if we have, if you're putting 15000 a year aside for capital improvements to the build, I mean, that's a starting point here. Mm -hmm. Is it for the building? Is it for everything? And how long, you know, will that cover it? Because if it's not, 
you know, we have to understand that that was put aside. There's a line item okay, for I that. I have an answer for you on that. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Lehman does run the numbers, and actually, what is the average, Mr. Lehman, about $34,000? $34,000 a year. So I took the major building repairs that the city paid for and the township paid for for the last six years. It came to $204,000, divided out over that six years. So $34,000 annually is, is what the, those building repairs are that the municipalities have paid for outside of the fire commission budget. I think that's why we wanted the clarification, because you have, I've been here for a year and a half, and I've seen many times where questions have come up about is that a fire commission expense or is that a township expense, is it a city expense? And I think it's running 34000 a year for the last six years. Um, with aging buildings, you would expect that it's going to go up over the next 10 years or the life of the, uh, the village. So I just, I think, you know, we read what was in the agreement, the initial ordinance, and it said it's going to come out of that budget. Right. But that has been the case for at least $204,000 of it. True. And that's just over the last six years since yes. 2011. And that's why the, the question of the $15,000 line item that was supposed to be used for these improvements, if it's not enough, then that's something that we have to talk about at some point because that's in addition to the budget that's not there and it has to be considered in what we're asking them to pay. So I don't have any problem with that and that's fine to go. I just, there was a line item if it's not enough and I appreciate that you're finding out that number. So we have something to go on going forward. And then if everybody's in agreement on the, you know, the, the commission is supposed to be paying those, then we have to up that line item and that's part of their budget. So they have to know they're responsible for 34,000 or if we're gonna make it 40,000 a year, just like you just did the, you know, when you're taking care of your attorney's fees and everything for your negotiations, they're now paying for that. So again, we just have to know what their budget truly is. Well, I think before we need to figure out where we want to put that expense, if we're going to put it into the budget, or there are certain building expenses that we're each individually, as a township or a city, going to cover. So I guess, you know, that number could vary depending on what goes on with the, with the structure. You know, it's been averaging 34,000. Some years it's been considerably more, some it's been less. But, um, you know, I don't know what that number is, but we're going to talk about that number eventually this, this evening. We have some charts that show some, some building expenses, what we anticipate those to be. And, that Mr. Heiser and, uh, and our chief uh, project some of those. But first, I think what we want to talk about is who should be responsible. I mean, it's kind of a philosophical issue that we're looking at right now, not dollars and cents. It's who should be responsible for their, their own building. And, the, you know, we've, we've got some that say, no, everybody should pay for their own building. We probably have some that say it should be in the, the fire budget. So I guess we need to iron out where we see that. Ms. Lane? Having been around longer than some of you, it has always been my personal belief, and as we talked about it over the years at the township, it was my belief and full agreement that township facilities, and we use that both as station two, three, and the fire tower, um, were our responsibility to take care of. And so, to the best of my knowledge, any expenses that were incurred at those three structures, the township board paid for out of our additional general fund allocation, and we never took them to the city. Okay. Any other perspectives on um, funding model for buildings, that is? Mr. Massey? The mayor mentioned $15,000 per year. Speak up just a little bit. The mayor mentioned $15,000 per year. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a business perspective, we're talking about repairing buildings, right? Yes, we're really talking about real property. Yep. Okay, real these. property. Now, I think we all will agree $15,000 a year is not enough. You cannot do too much with $15,000. So we know the number has to move from 15,000 to some higher number. Now what that higher number is, it has to be calculated. Right. 
and we, we've got some charts that we're going we're gonna to show what we project those expenses to be. And I think what we want to do is just philosophically decide who's going to be responsible for those. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Supervisor, this is a question for uh, Mrs. Mayor. Hi. Uh, how, <laughs> how did you perceive this working before? I've heard this numerous times from our township on this side saying, well, it's always been a ladies and gentlemen agreement that if this is ours and we take care of this, that's why we paid for the tower, we paid for repairs in a hallway or some sort in our building, and that the city paid for yours. And then what happened was over this $15,000 kitchen, now all of a sudden the light switch. Well, eight thousand. Sixty-seven hundred or sixty-two. Sixty-seven hundred. Okay, sixty-seven hundred dollars kitchen. Mm -hmm. Now it's all of a sudden come to the no that money's coming out of the commission. Before, how did you and your board look at the relationship between their buildings, our buildings, or was it always our buildings? No, no. Not ours, meaning the whole yeah. Grand Blake community. Okay, are you saying ours being the township over the city? No, I, I'm no, I, that's not I what just, I'm asking. Okay, so I need what to I'm asking what is, did you look at these uh, station one as being your station and look at station three being our station? That's how or, it's been. or did you look at it so that's how it's always been? No, that was what it was before the millage. That we took care of station one and the township took care of their station. After the millage, it was our you know, it was our discussion that money would be set aside to take care of, you know, issues that came up at all the buildings, and that was going to be taken care of. As I understood it in our discussions, it was going to be the fire commission would take care of it. But $15,000 a year? Again, that was the number that was decided upon, and it, I'm just looking it for was historical. A, yeah, so that's historical. That's where it was. They came to us, they needed a roof, we paid for the roof. So it was like, yes it was, they didn't have the money, we paid for it. Okay. So now, and again, our, our council has not had this discussion. Well, so I, I, it, it's a little <clears throat> bit difficult for me to sit here right now and, you know, our council has not talked about this. So I can't sit here and I don't, we're not at a council meeting. We don't have the time in this agenda to sit here and, you know, I'm going to ask my council people, oh, well, what do you think about it? Because we haven't discussed it. Uh, so I'm just asking to, the historical context. But that was the yeah. historical context well, that we, we paid yeah. for. I'd like Mr. Right. Barnes to speak on behalf of the commission. I've been on the fire commission since February of 2009. My recollection when we went to the millage, it was an assistance and maybe Mr. Creel can confirm or deny. It was a strong request from the city that $15,000 be allocated from the city's contribution specifically for repairs to building one, station one. And that was with $15,000 was only to be used in station one. That wasn't. That's what I recall. And like I said, yeah. I, I've been on the that, That's fine. That's not what I recall. But that's why you know some discussion needs to be. I guess we'd have to find the notes from some of the. I know it was Mr. Babber who brought it up, and he was very yeah. strongly sure committed. And Mayor and Baby was adamant that fifteen thousand dollars was from the city funding to Station One. I don't know what are the city council members. I don't. Yeah, I think she was. No, we haven't discussed that. It's the mayor. Historically, I mean, not, I don't know, I think that he was here at that time. No, Mr. John was here and I was here. You know, and. I mean, in and, terms of whose responsibility. And you know. when did we don't you have a historical. No, I'm, I'm not saying the responsibility for all of it. Just saying what? that $15,000 sinking fund, if I remember the correct terms, was specifically for Station 1 because it was $15,000 from the city's contribution. They wanted allocated specifically for repairs at, at Building One. And see, and I remember because it was your money. You said I wanted, we wanted it to be, and I'll see. Let me be more specific. Mr. Cuff, based on uh, Mayor Sutterfield's comment, and in my understanding of this meeting, is is really is to try to get the the field and some minds and some discussions about where this agenda, what what's addressed in this agenda. But I didn't really think that we were 
the intent was to come out of here with decision making. Right. Is that not the case? Right. We, we're here to I think talk. It's, we're, is no, that what you're so, saying? We want to see what how everybody feels about stuff. And we're going to go back and talk about it in our own settings, right? And some of the clarification I wanted from the chief was so we could go back and yes. discuss this. Is Perfect. okay. The building repairs. So far, we've spent on the building repairs. For, you know, yeah, I don't have that figure okay. in front of me. So, so see, we have a lot of things that need to be clarified, and yes. that we can and work we on. Dennis, yes, we actually have some of that information yeah. that we're going to cover. But is that actually the case, uh, Mr. Supervisor, or are we, are we expecting decisions here this evening? I think, you know, what we're looking at is, is having an, an open and yes. honest yes. discussion on, on what the philosophy is. We aren't going to be able to even, I mean, yeah. come up with what the total dollar amount is that we want to look at for a millage. I think what we want to do is get a feel for the philosophy behind how we want the thing to operate. If, if we see these as our own buildings and that we're going to pay for our own buildings, or we see them as, you know, a joint operation that we're going to both pay for the buildings. Um, and I, I know our perspective, or at least most of our perspectives were, but. You know, we, we don't well, know what we the perspective even, of the city. We haven't even discussed. Right, but I mean individually, they must have opinions. Well, I, I need to assume that this is something that, as a council, I personally haven't spent a whole lot of time. Yeah, so and I don't want to make any kind of comments. Yeah, and I didn't think that was, because if that was the case, I would have brought this to council before we came here. I thought, again, we were discussing somewhat the distribution, how much we all pay for it, getting that kind of aired out, straightened out. This is more information on the table that we can have. And again, if the chief doesn't know it, I certainly don't, you know, the utilities, you know, do you pay for the utilities? I mean, so that could be, you pay for the utilities in all the buildings, or does the township pay well, for it? No, but it's, it's and a what we're doing here. is we want to look at moving forward. I don't know what, you know, we, we've done it several different ways in the past. You know, you pay for some of your buildings, some of it's come out of the uh, budget of the fire. I guess what we want to look at is where do we want to go from here. We can't do anything about how it's operated over the past 20 years, but, but what we can affect is what we want to have happen from the new agreement forward. And that wasn't clear to me when we met. That wasn't clear to me that, you know, I thought we were going to iron some of this out of who pays what. So we have an idea, so our council knows what's going on, and then we can talk about it, you know, going forward. If you want to just say, okay, going forward, we need time to talk about it. It's not the place yet. Well, I us. thought that's what we were meeting for, is to look at where we're going. I'm not sure it's going to help us a whole lot looking at it where we're going. Yes, Mr. Heiser. Mr. Heiser? I almost forgot. <laughs> I just wanted to point out uh, for budget purposes, and I have a keen ear for listening to detail. You got to speak up, Mr. Heiser. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Um, so I listened to the detail, and there were some requests made about this $15,000 a year. I saw some authority for it. If you look at the budget, it's on sort of this page, page four. My, those are my page, my page four. There is a budget in there for $85,000. Uh, that represents this amount of $15,000 for almost six years. To date, I'm not sure what gets charged against it, but it is in the budget. So we have reserved it, and perhaps as we go forward, uh, we will uh, know what gets charged to it. Well, to, yes, uh, Thomas. to get back to my original question, uh, in the historical context, and not, I need to look back to look forward, where it's, you know, we just made mention that you just said that in the past you paid for your buildings, we paid for our buildings. But then when I go through and I look at the millage request, the millage writing and the articles of corporation, that was never ever discussed, it was never written down uh, for lack of eight years ago. So it's your understanding right now that you take care of your buildings, we take care of ours. Well, well you kind of, sort of. I, I'm not trying, I'm not yeah, trying to do anything down, I'm just this, trying to. You know, again. Well, how would, how, okay, let's say that. And uh, we did take care of it, but if we're moving forward, I'm, right. not, I'm not sure if we're moving backwards or moving forwards and, and where we're supposed to go. All I know is we haven't had a discussion on any of this at council meeting. 
So, and if you've had discussions, then you're ahead of the game. We're we're really we're ahead of we need to be. The agenda, we, yeah, the, let me make this clear. The agenda that we came up with this mutually between you and myself and Mr. and Wendy, um, we, we came up with this at the same time. So this isn't something that the township came up with no, and is spreading on anybody. I so, never said that. So this agenda has been out there for over a month. No, I never said that. But okay, I, just, I, I just want to make that clear. I misunderstood some of it. They, your, our board got this at the same time as, as your board. So. And I, went, and I tried to digest this as fast as I could in 30 days. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, because I keep on hearing things about the tower that we paid for when you were on the fire commission, Kent, Dr. Clark? Which two years ago we had to do an extensive renovation because of some engineering defects as well as some safety issues. And we, and we paid for that. And how much was that? 74,000 some change. And is your numbers with the 35,000 or 30, 35, and was that including that 75,000 for the? That's right. And it was probably like two years ago, Wendy, that you guys put a roof on station number one, and that was like thirty thousand dollars. Yep. So I mean, it's been before some of the board. I would assume if you've been on the board longer than a couple of years, but you guys had to face it then. Like, and that's why we're we're really hoping to get some clarification. Again, it's not to be solved today, but you know, at some point, you guys decided to put a roof on for thirty thousand, so you weren't expecting it to come out of that fifteen thousand dollar capital fund. You were, you were protecting your own building, no different than we did the fire tower for $74,000 because it was our building. And I, that's what I'm trying to understand from an administrative standpoint. Like, you know, it, it seemed like the township board was telling me for the last year and a half that we you always pay for your own. We've got structural supports we're going to put in for $16,000 on number two. Um, and that, that's something I have to deal with in my budget. And I, I just want clarification moving forward. Like, is it, isn't it? And so, again, not to be solved today, but what was the fire commission's understanding of what they were supposed to pay? What was the county board's understanding of what they were supposed to pay? And you guys clearly put the roof on, so your understanding was that you should put right. a roof on. But what happened out of that discussion was we went and researched and found that they had to put the 15,000 away. And that's where our discussion began with that, that they needed to be removed. Okay. So we had to shame them us for not checking you. But from this point forward, you need to put that 15000 away. And we didn't have it, so we are going to pay for it because it's a roof. And we didn't want it to be leaking. And it was something that needed to be done. So we stepped up and we paid for it. And, and so for clarification, Mr. Barnes had said earlier that the $15,000 was coming out of your contribution was going to only be used on the station number one in the city. But that is not your recollection. Mayor was that it was really that fifteen thousand dollars was going to be for whatever, whatever building needs to be repaired. Right. Thank you. And, and the definition, I mean, I guess that's what we need to know too. What's the definition of capital purchase? I mean, is that trucks? Is that building? Just is that? And for clarification, you know that the kitchen is in Station One, which is where they're housed. Now, if they were housed in Station 2, you'd have to put in a kitchen. So, that's part of the 24-7 service. Right. Mr. Massey, which is I'd like for something to be clarified here, for me especially. Going back to uh, Mr. Carl's comment about the $85,000, and I don't see your name. What's your name? Wendy. Ms. Wendy. You you alluded to the fact, if I understood you correctly, that the township may not have been putting fifteen thousand dollars aside. No, no, I, I didn't. What did you say? The fire commission. Fire commission. Okay, but Carl stated, Mr. Carl stated that there's about eighty-five thousand in one it's line a, item. It's in the line item budget for two thousand seventeen for the first time. Right. I don't know what to charge to it yet until we have agreement here. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, that's kind of, I guess, to a point. I said we weren't going to walk away with agreements, but we could walk away with philosophical decisions, right? right. So the idea being, as you heard Wendy say, that, that they discovered that the 15 wasn't put in there. But had it been put in, and had it been possibly in reserve, would the would I would I be agreeing to putting that thirty thousand dollar roof on them? on the city building, and my, my answer to that would be based on our past practice, would be the answer to that would be no. 
because you know it's just like the repair we did to the to the training tower, right? Mm -hmm. Or the wall out in three. Mm -hmm. So that I guess that's what we need. We could kind of walk away with those kinds of you know kind of consensus, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess from Mr. Griffin or Mr. Laddy. Unless this would be putting you on the spot, and you guys need to kind of get together. What is there a legal opinion on, uh, you know, minor repairs, light switches, kitchen remodels, microwaves, those kinds of things? Different story. But if we were to have a roof collapse, Mr. Laddie, out on three, I mean, is there a legal issue? The, the commission does not own buildings. Right. That's that is true, and, and we have had that opinion shared. I actually between Mr. Griffith's office and mine. Again, uh, as we made reference in Section 3 uh, of the agreement, you have, and that relates to purchases, it says all major operating and capital purchases and expenses, including compensation and benefits, should be, should be from this budget. But I, I understand historically exactly what, what you understood as well. Now, um, I know, again, we, we have determined that the Commission itself can't own real property. And Mr. Griffin, I'll, if you have a different opinion, I'll certainly uh, defer to you on that. So we have, I think the, that that concept has been, since, since the commission doesn't have the right, they wouldn't have the responsibility to maintain the real property. But uh, again, I'm going to defer to the folks that were here um, serving in those roles back then. Mr. Griffin? Well, I think, that, uh, I think he's correct in the, uh, the extent that uh, the ownership uh, falls within the city or township, depending on where that building is, from a general uh, legal opinion uh, without an uh, absence of agreement it would fall on the owner of the building to have that a safe building to which uh, it would be used for whatever business purpose it is. So that would mean if you took that to its uh, conclusion is the city would be responsible for whatever buildings they own and the township would be responsible for whatever building they own. That's setting aside an agreement otherwise. So, I mean, if you, you have agreement that there's going to be a budget, it's going to be used for certain uh, items within the entire fire commission, you can do that. If you said we aren't going to have an agreement on anything, uh, I think the owner of the building is responsible because if you take it to its ultimate conclusion, uh, if there is a dissolution of the fire commission, who owns the buildings? Those people who are either in this, oh, it's either in the deed, uh, in the city, or deed in the country. Ms. Lane? Uh, <clears throat> to move from the past again to where we are today or going forward, I personally am totally satisfied with the township taking care of everything that's in the township and is our structure, whether it's you know, if it's a light switch, I mean, we have people that can change the light switches. But I have no problem, personally, with our taking care of our buildings, and I don't even need a legal opinion, although I respect both of you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for me, in my value system, to say, I'll take care of the township buildings. We built them. We built the tower back in the 80s, I think, in order for us to train our fire department. And we just did it. And that's, I think, that the city and the township are stronger when we're together. And if we can have, like I'm, I've always felt, we're a family, we can agree to handshake and we can still have differences of opinion. And I thought tonight, that was all we were gonna do. Our family was getting together and saying, hey, we're growing, yippee. Everybody enjoys our community. Yippee. How can we now, when we have a terrific fire department, make it better in the next five years or ten years and plan for it like we would if we were doing our own home? That's all I wanted to do tonight, not to have, just to have a consensus of how we feel and then we can get down to nitty gritty and Walt and David can diagram sentences. <laughs> Well, then, there, you know, you, Kathy, you, you bring up a good issue in that, uh, you know, we are growing. I'm sure the city will have growth as well. Uh, you know, there comes a point where do we need another fire station, do we need more staff, what have you. So I think, you know, our, my discussion with our leadership is that, you know, rather than just making an agreement for this millage that deals with the next year, 
and then we're back at this three years from now trying to figure out how do we pay for our growth. Uh, we need to build into our, our plan where we're going the next five, ten years so that whatever millage we pass is a ten-year millage, we're not running short. I think some of the graphs we're going to get to here in a few minutes um, will explain some of the, that, you know, looking at, um, looking at future projections on expenses, where things are going so that when we do plan that next millage that we're recovering our bases. Uh, you know, there, there might be something as far as land acquisition or additional buildings in the future uh, that we need to, to look at and whose responsibilities would those be. If we're in this and we're taking it out of the budget, then, then we need to, when we're looking at what the millage is going to be, then we need to factor that in. So uh, these are simply, these here are kind of uh, assumptions that we wanted to have before we start taking a look at what the millage would need to be. Because when we're looking at projecting expenses, we need to figure out which category to put them in. If these expenses are going to be in our, our general operating budget for the fire commission, then we need to project that. If, if they're going to be in our own budgets, then we need to maybe subtract those from them. So I don't know if, if, if this exercise is something that we want to see if we can come to any, I don't know if we can come to any agreement, but if, if people have opinions on it so that you know, we know where people stand, so when we go back, we can, uh, you know, we, we kind of have an idea. I, I really don't know where the city stands on who they think should be responsible for, for buildings. I heard your opinion, the attorney's opinion, but uh, I, I don't know that our board feels one way or the other, but I know people have definite opinions. We haven't taken a vote or anything of that nature. Well, I agree with Cassie that we are a lot smarter together as a community of Grand Blank. And it's just some of these things we just have to figure out. Because, you know, before we know it, it's budget time again, the village is gone, and we need to figure out if we're gonna take care of our buildings, their buildings, are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? You know, we're not gonna vote on anything. This isn't law, I, I hope not, I'm not attorney Laddie. No, no, we're, this is just a, exact, a meeting exactly as we have all described. It. Right. I know, so we are stronger together. If we haven't put $85,000 into the budget to take care of building repairs, because that's what it's going to be, you know, when I'm looking for everything, it's going to be about $85,000, $90,000 into our capital improvement plan for the four, the three buildings and the one structure. You know, you have to look at, a oh, roof's not going to last 30 years, you know, 40 years. So we have to, but are we going to put it in our budget? Are we going to put it into the chief's budget? Or, I'm sorry, the commission's budget? Mr. Mansour? So, so you know, we, some of the uh, issues that have been brought up here are, are historical, and that's interesting. But uh, <clears throat> I think the main portion of this is, the main point of this is to move forward. And it seems like there's a little bit of an imbalance here between maybe uh, the uh, amount of time that the city has had a chance to consider these things mm -hmm. versus maybe some of the time that the, the township, for one reason or another, has thought about it. So it's probably the case that we can't come uh, even to uh, an agreement here on how the city as a whole feels about these things. But maybe one place where we can come to some kind of a agreement is how we're framing uh, what we would project as the cost of our of our fire service over the next number of years. And then maybe the next step becomes divvying up or understanding, you know, how we choose to fund that. Because that might be information we can all kind of look at and, and agree without having to make a specific uh, commitment to the plan. Okay. Is your suggestion? Yes, Mr. Yeah, I think we have to do something very quickly because right now the budget, I mean, they don't have enough money to fund the, the capital improvements for the trucks. They're short right now. They're taking our funding money that's supposed to go to trucks and they're spending on stuff that they have to have. Well, they had got to do it. And the, and the same thing happened with that 15000 It's in there. Well, they had to buy equipment. They had to buy other stuff to survive and to protect the whole city and township. So to me, you know, we have to get more money, and we're just trying to in this chart to decide, okay, is it going to go in this in the chief's budget, or is it going to go in the township and the city's budget? That's all we're deciding here, and then we're going to build a budget 
that has to cover it because he right now he lost money last year. He's going to lose more money next year, and they don't even have the full four four guys. They've only got three guys, and they're supposed to have four because they're they're doing with the money that they have and trying to make it work, which is what everybody wants. Which is, you know anyone would do that. If you only have so much money, well, you fix it any way you can and get it done. That's what they're doing, but. We're in a deficit, we're all in a deficit, it won't make it. I mean, if we don't do anything, these trucks, we'll be able to buy any trucks, we'll be able to buy any equipment or anything. One of the things, I don't want to uh, belabor this, I think uh, unless somebody has a great idea that we can come to an agreement, I, I think these items here are going to be things that our boards obviously need to chew on and figure out. Uh, so we're not going to go through the questions then? Well, I'm not sure, I mean, if, for simple things that I'd like to, you know, it seems that it would be kind of easy. Do you pay your utilities? Is the township paying? I mean, there are some things that are fairly easy here. It seems to me the biggest question is the, the buildings themselves, you know, the roofs, the, if there's a crack somewhere, who's going to take care of the actual physical building there? So that, that becomes a different, if, if everything else we take care of, you take care of, or they take care of, and we're okay with that, it seems to me the building is the, the essence of what we're talking about. Who's going to take care of that? The first time I'm hearing now, growth, a new building, this is all, you know, well, that's new to us. And that, that becomes another question about what, how that budget is made and, and what those costs are going to be and how we look at those as a group. And, and that's, a, that's a long time discussion. It's not for tonight. Some of these things that I would think was like, I don't know the answer to that. I didn't ask the chief, do you pay your utilities? So if you pay those for, for all the buildings, then that's, good. that's off of here. The only one we don't pay for is station number two, because right. it's housed in the government center. And that would be a percentage of the bill. Okay. So. So that's, so that's one kind of taken care of. The so routine building maintenance as of now, lighting, painting, flooring, et cetera, have you paid for that? Or have... It depends on what it is. Let's check them off. Well, that's what I'm trying yeah. to do so that Let's we could just, just at least get something, yeah. you know, off the table yeah. that we know right. this isn't an issue. And that's what I thought we were going to do. Mr. Massey's got to stand up over here for a little while. I have a concern, man. Yeah? Mr. Man. Sure. I feel as though your city council is at a disadvantage. Yeah. I was under the impression coming into this meeting that you had already discussed these issues with your city council because I was under the impression that you had ample time to do that. But now I have learned, I think from you that you alluded to, that you, did, you have not done that. Is that true? No, you're right. You're correct in that. We haven't discussed this to this detail. It was coming together to look at some of these, to have some input, and then to sit and talk about it. We were coming here, and even though oh, you know the four of us have gotten together, it was like, oh yeah, we're filling this all out. You know, there are a lot of questions out here, um, just like oh, possibly a new building, which is you know like oh okay, you know, and and who's that falling to, and is that the discussion that we're having? I don't know. Well, I think I think the reason why I brought up the building is is what I'm saying is that we don't want to necessarily just plan for an agreement that lasts one year. I but appreciate I'm, that. I'm not sure, you know, um, what 10 years. We've got some graphs and charts of what it looks like for capital equipment needs over the next 10 years. And that's all going to be news to yeah. me because I haven't seen any right. of this. Either yep. has council. And, and so it's like, okay, so let's look at this. I don't have a problem looking at it. As a starting point, and then going back, you talk to your group, we'll talk to ours. Then we can get together if we have, you know, to yep. discuss this. Mr. Heiser's had a hand. Yes, um, looking at the same grid that you're looking at here, uh, in, the, in the order of taking the first step under utilities, the chief and I have gone over this, and uh, we're recommending here, like station, station which we're already doing, uh, the fire commission pays for that, and station two, um, the township pays for that, and then station three, uh, the commission pays for that. I recommend we continue with that process unless there's other ideas. 
it's worked fine. We've been paying it consistently. Okay, I didn't hear. Is that oh. utilities, Carl? Yes, utilities. That's the only item you mentioned? Yeah, yeah. I, I right. wanted to get one block done. So yeah. if I could, I'd, I'd like to make a suggestion. It, it sounds, you know, as uh, Mr. Mansour mentioned, that uh, your board and our board need to take another look at, at these expenses. Uh, you know, the history is good of how it's occurred. You know, maybe, maybe it isn't good, but we need to look at it as our individual boards as to what we see as philosophically how we want to move forward on these things. So I'm not sure us going through the current budget and saying, well, the township pays for this right now and the city pays for that, so let's keep doing that. I think we need to come up with a philosophy that each of our boards say, here's how we want to approach this in the future. And then when we, we get back together again, we have an idea of where your city council feels that these expenses should go in our township board. Because right now, I think we're going to be here forever going through current practice and, well, I feel it should be this. So um, it doesn't sound like there's any real unified effort. And I think we would be better served, just my opinion, but maybe better served to take this back. Yes. It, it, even though we do lack a lot of information and we're trying to catch up here right. um, as a newer council member, I do appreciate the historical uh, basis for some of this, and I do like to know what is actually sure. going on with this stuff right. before we can actually move on with council okay. so that we can come up with some viable recommendations that would possibly work for all sure. of us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so if we could go back, you know, when we're asking questions about the historical basis, I think that's great because right. I feel like, I don't know, I, I almost feel like I'm being attacked right now. <laughs> what I'd like to do is give you the time to be able to get that perspective. I don't know that we want to, because we're running these two. Yes. I, 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 I understand that, but you, you guys have at least talked about it a little bit okay. in some cases. Yes. And I'm well, not even part of it. If everybody wants to spend time on going through that, we can. If the chief and, and the treasurer have some of those answers, I thought that's what we were coming together for. We still have 10 minutes under the agenda for, for we this. We 10 minutes as far as outlining. Uh, if we don't, if, Right now. Sure, you want to go to snow removal, lawn care, and landscaping yeah. at this yeah. present time? Yeah. The city yeah. 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 handling their own okay. city well, buildings. Right. Um, under routine building maintenance, this is where it's going to get a little money. If it's a simple light fixture replacement, simple one, that's fine. Uh, but for an example, the light fixture that's station one has been up since 1971. Some of them don't work in the apparatus bay. Those totally need to be replaced. So if it's that one that the fire commission is going to handle, or is that one that we would be looking at the city to handle? That's the question there. Okay. But small line items, we, we, we'll handle those. Painting and some Chief, simple things. Chief, is there a dollar amount that, you're, that comes to mind that what triggers it? Right off the top of my head, I don't have one. Uh, but that's something that we could put together and be able to come back to the, the group with. What's the trigger? The, the yeah, the what's amount. the trigger to say that, this is you? Says, oh, maybe you should do it or we should do it, which would be good. Right. Yeah, the fire commission can do it. We can make a presentation back here. Okay. And we replaced overhead doors, put the fire commission budget. Just recently we replaced, correct me if I'm wrong, we repaired or replaced one of the overhead doors, did we not? Yes. Station. We replaced station doors. One. At station one? Station okay. one. We replaced, okay. we repaired doors at station two. Where did that one come out? Uh, that came out of our budget. Okay. And you replaced doors at two? Yes. And that was out of the fire commission? Yes. Three, have you put, for, for this routine building maintenance, except for now that there are some equivocal ones that you're saying you want to ask us for or not, has there been anything at three? Nothing major at station number three. Then okay. Our, you know. that, we had some major. Yes, yeah, you do. Okay, do. so then that's the township. township. So that's yeah. good to know. Township is paid for those, which is good because then we have a check. So we know what's, what, what's going on there. Why would he? Mr. Guzak? Oh, that's all right. Go ahead. Okay, so snow removal, lawn care, landscaping. That's uh, the city takes care of their own station, and the township is taking care of their own properties there. Okay, so they take, the township takes care of two and three. Yes. City takes care of one. Mm -hmm. Okay. The building renovations, uh, that's obviously been part of, that's been a mixed bag. What, that's another mixed bag, and if we use a $15,000 trigger, 
gives us a better idea if that's solely for building renovations or building maintenance, let's say. Okay. Something like that. We, okay. we, can, we can work in that. But items over $15,000, we'd have to come back and go to the individual um, owners of the buildings, it's called. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Anything else? We did it. Why couldn't, why couldn't we take the philosophy that uh, if this was an apartment building and they were renting, the owner pays for what they're supposed to and the renter does what they're supposed to do because that's basically the relationship we have. I think that's what we're trying to figure mm -hmm. out. Is there a different lease of relationships where renters pay a whole bunch and, right. you know, uh, depends what kind of... It seems like yeah, that's a good door. I shouldn't be paid well, by the commission. I think, it, I think it's a good analogy. We're, yeah. we're trying to figure out what the lease agreement is, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Right. So, because it doesn't seem like a, the door that the commission paid for, they should have to pay for That's the building. The yeah, door is a, I concur. I mean, I mean, I don't. If I was renting an apartment and the garage door broke, I'd call you, the owner, to pay for it. Okay, I answer. think that we both have our own buildings and we should take care of the building structure individually. The things that go for the fire department to actually operate need to be shared. That's good. Do you know what I mean? What sort so of if it's our building and it needs a new roof, we put a new roof on it. But if it's something that directly relates to them being able to do their job, not being housed, but being able to do the job, then it's collective. So one way of describing it is real property versus personal property. I don't know if it's Real property meaning the actual physical structure of the building, Personal property meaning anything that we can really carry out of there um, and use for fire or drive out of there. Yes, so is that, that is that how you interpret it, or do you interpret things like renovations of kitchens, sleeping quarters, etc., as being part of how uh, firefighters do their job? I think because that's part of their job. I mean, they need that to do their job, right? Because no. if they're in station one, they're housed there. It can be housed there without a kitchen. So that's a collective expense. Yeah, but okay. But if the pavement needs to be redone because the driveway is crumbling, we own that building, we need to take care of that. That's how I think of it. And maybe this is a good starting point for each one to come and hash it out together. You know, that you look at it because obviously you've got different, like, I'm hearing all kinds of different things. I'm hearing a few different things here. We need some time, but we have a starting point here. At least we, we have you know, are we all in agreement we'll take care of the buildings or not or you know so we need to I think come back and spend time on that as each group was there another comment I thought I saw you uh, sleeping in the board question okay. all right Mr. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Supervisor going back to the utilities I don't want to beat a dead horse but can you explain to me why the fire commission's paying for the uh, utilities and one and three or the two in the township i know that it's housed in the government building but i know that well i know for a fact that mr limiter could actually cut that out and would make more sense to me that it would be paid all the buildings through the fire commission it could be done it just has not been right. done so well, that That's really should be done yeah. <laughs> even at the 80 20 split mm -hmm. you know it still should be done that way I'm sure you can get that number. Yeah. And we can revisit that as well. Yeah, and that's yeah. fine, because now no. we have a, we have a right. starting point. Yep, so, I agree, yeah. totally. I like the idea about real property. I love that, I've said. One of the things on the agenda, just to keep moving, is uh, item D under number four was uh, agreement on equal funding through millage and uh, match. And so I don't know that we're going to uh, agree on that tonight, or uh, unless somebody has some Discussion point on that. I'm not sure. Yes, Ms. Lane. Well, I'm here like I think most of us are. Let's get to these discussions. And I'm saying we, as a philosophy, felt that having the same half mill in the city and the township and our matching that half mill made it equal for every resident. And it was based on your taxable value. So if you were poor, you were paying the same as somebody that had more money. And I think keeping it equal is going back to we are stronger when we're saying to our residents, we are treating you all equally. 
So you're saying the match that the township puts in and the amount that the city puts in should... Right. Should Whenever we're talking about millage, we should be talking about the city residents and the township residents paying the same millage. And if the budgets, when we look at them for the next umpteen years, need us to match it with general fund monies, it's the same thing. You would match the, you know, you would match the half mill or the mill or the 29 mills we're going to ask. I'm not, I'm not sure we have the full mill to match from our budget. Right. So, so, so I, I think that the idea uh, that Ms. Lane has of common amounts of millage rates for city and township, I think that that's a solid, certainly one that's completely defendable. Mm -hmm. Now, how that all gets, you know, mission, how that all gets funded between actual millages and fund, general funds. I mean, I think that's something that we can, can address at a later point. But I think fundamentally, we think it's fair to have the same amount of millage rate from the residents of the city and the township to fund this fire. I don't okay. think there's ever been a question about okay. that, Al. From the beginning, I think that's what got the fire millage passed the first time. It was because finally there was equity. Okay. And, you know, we're all getting a service we're all paying, I'm paying the same as you are, it doesn't matter where you live, where I live. That fire, I have a fire, I want that truck there. And so I'm paying the same as you are for the same service. And I think that's, again, what had the fire millage pass when we came for it. I agree with you, ma'am. There's no genuine there's no animosity no. No. that I've ever heard from residents that, hey, we're, they're getting better service because of this or that. We're paying equal amount. Mm -hmm. Nobody can honestly say that one municipality is being treated better than another. And then the whole issue when it came up, besides the equity, it was the timing. That was a critical piece of this because it didn't matter where you lived. We had a fire in the city, it took 13 minutes. Because people say, oh, it's, you know, station one is right there, so you get your service. No, we didn't. It, things didn't happen, but we're down. Everybody is getting that service. That's what we were looking for, so we have equity, and we have, you know, everybody is being served to the same, you know, extent. So I couldn't agree more, Kathy. I think we're going to uh, move on to our, our next agenda item, uh, which is uh, are we prepared to meet the future needs of our communities? And uh, one of the slides that uh, our fire chief provided us, I think, uh, let's see. Um, Mr. Heiser, would you like to? Talk about this a little bit. Let me uh, slide. get the right page here. Here I can do it. I got it. Well, what this slide presents uh, that I put together with my under you know my own format and the source documentation are the audits reports from Yo and Yo. Uh, those can be easily uh, compiled and looked at. But what I'm trying to do in the very first line it says general fund and it should say revenues. In other words, revenues. And I showed the revenues, these are actual uh, from the audit reports for 12, 31, 16 was 1,204,773. And, and, and I looked at the first full year after the millage was passed in 11, was 1,395,997. Uh, what I discovered, as I mentioned here, the revenues had basically flatlined with the millage and the contribution. It's flatlined. If we're not all of a sudden going to pick up a half a million dollars, uh, it's been flatlined. And so we're looking at really <laughs> um, revenues that we've been counting on since 2011, and here we are in 17. However, expenses have increased, uh, just like the price of a car from 2011 to 2017. Uh, and I looked at the general fund expenditures for 16, and this is off the audit report, and so we're at a million forty-five oh eleven. Uh, and, you know, we were uh, very low in 2011, I mean, uh, 2011 at 642,977, 
A fact is a fact. This is from the audit report. And so, you know, our general fund has increased from 2011 to 2016 by budget and also being organized in 2014, uh, we've increased $402,000. Now, in my comments here, um, which are, I believe, fair and balanced, general fund revenues have been level for the last seven years for the seven, you know, city and township. Uh, that's a fact. You can look at the audit reports. Uh, the, fire, fire, the fire department uh, general fund expenditures increased 400, 402000 uh, and that's sort of dramatic because that's not a very good comparison. This is, but that was what the expenditures were. Uh, and then we went forward uh, for you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now this is with a, a half mil. And the half mil, you can see what it's going to be if we stay with the half mil. And so what I did, these are factual. What you're looking at here is factual information, not projected. So I looked at this and I said, first I thought we were going to go for a five mil uh, millage, and then I was told, Dennis let me know, and no, it's 10. And so initially I thought we could wiggle by for five years at a half mil. Uh, then when the 10-year the ten uh, millage uh, schedule was being worked on here, to me it was very clear the half mill would not work for 10 years. Uh, I haven't determined, well not me, but there has to be a determination of what the new millage would be after all the research and the sorting out of the information comes together. I'm just looking at trending and I've been doing this for 30 years. So, uh, you know, I, I felt that we need to look at it. I threw out, just for discussion purposes, uh, it should be at least a mill, maybe less, but that's a benchmark I feel comfortable with. But executive decisions and agreements have to be put in place before we determine what this new millage would be. And then I say going forward, uh, this would probably never work, but I put it down there, uh, number Number four, going forward, I think township and uh, city contribution should be reviewed every two years, if necessary. If it goes up or goes down. Don't just say, well, we passed the millage 10 years ago, and that's what we're given. I mean, stick your head in the sand then, all right? Be realistic, let's take a look at it. And this is a joint effort. We have fixed, it's like someone who's retired when I give them a bill. I'm on a fixed income, Carl. I can't pay your bill, you know. So uh, we've got to recognize we have a fixed income, and the expenses only go one way, and that's with our health care, and our union contracts, and the cost of supplies and equipment. Fire trucks may have cost six hundred thousand dollars, maybe two years ago, three years ago. We're looking at eight and a half, eight hundred fifty thousand dollars or more. A brake job is not nine ninety nine. It could be. It could be as high as $8,000 on some of these vehicles. You know, this, these are big ticket items. But that all, you know, needs to be understood and come back. So I showed where we were, and uh, I didn't have a particular direction I was going with this. I'm just reporting the facts. And you can't ignore facts, and that's history. And these are trends. Amen. With what we, let me see what order, kind of out of order with the slides here. Yes. Um, just for clarification, uh, just for, for clarification, um, the general fund expenditures from 2011, just so we can look, because if we're using this to look at increase in expenditures, was that before we had full staffing that number? Mr. Heiser, did you hear the question? That on the, the sheet that you were going over, uh, the expenditures from 2011, did that include the staffing levels that we have? No, it did not. But I did point that out because it was not a very valid comparison because we didn't have the staffing levels that we had to go to in 13 and 14. But that is a fact. I'm just looking back at it. Uh, the facts I just concluded that we're, you know, flatlining our revenues and our expenses are increasing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Limita uh, and Mr. Heiser and Fire Chief uh, using their numbers, um, would you like to explain 
the projection here for wages and benefits? I'd love to. Um, there, everybody has this uh, particular graph in their packet. In your packet, there's a bunch of them. They're not all going to be on this PowerPoint. Um, and, and, uh, and you don't necessarily have this one in your, in your thing, but it will show you just some of the assumptions that we put together going out to 2030. There's a sheet that actually breaks it down that looks like this in your packet where the numbers are coming from. But those assumptions were put together by Chief Burdett with wages based upon an anticipated 2% annual increase through 2030 with the cost of health insurance at 4% uh, potential increase through 2030. Again, these assumptions were based on what we think is a relatively conservative estimate, but to just to show that the potential for growth and what would happen when you take the total from 946.5 for 2017 and project it out to 2030, you're looking at an increase up to $1.3 million. So as we work on where we need to be for funding for that next 10-year village, we have to be able to kind of project out and base a set of assumptions. I don't have any magic um, eight ball that tells me that I'm hitting it right on my assumptions, and I would certainly be open to anybody who has uh, <coughs> believes that they have better assumptions than I do, then I, I think we could go by that. But, uh, does this curve here reflect constant number of people and staff so it's just wages and benefits, or does it reflect anything? It, it's, it, it's with what we've got right now. If, if we, if it, this, all of these assumptions were based upon we're going to operate exactly like we're operating now. Okay, so that's not an additional person. It has the position that's vacant right now funded oh, because okay. the numbers came directly from the 2017 budget uh, numbers that were provided by the fire department. If that position was funded, this is what the cost would be. Okay, so that, that's... So we currently have it vacant, but we have it vacant right. because we don't have the money to fill it. No, no, I understand that, but I just wanted to look at this and know if I'm looking at a number that's telling me we're paying for five people, or look at a number that's telling me we're paying for four people. So if you have, that's an assumption if that you have still... concerns, you can back $75,000 back oh. out of that number. Yeah, okay. But it yeah. is the current budget for 2017. It's so in their operational in plan and has been, we just haven't yeah. been able to afford to fund it. Right. So just to clarify that, that's four full-time people and the rest are part-time, right? Correct. That we have now. Yes. We only have three, three full-time at this point, but we put in four full-time. No. With our numbers. With the chief, we have four, right? You have no, it's, at this present time, take myself out. Okay. Okay. That's a one full-time position, but it's not counted as part of the original four right. when the millage was right. conceived. Was right. Before we got the full. That's right. 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 So right now you have three full-time firefighters that are on duty. Right. Right now. But the that's graph shows Chris Calarini, the inspector, and two working 24-hour shifts. And so you have one open position. Two, right. Mm -hmm. I'm off to the side. <laughs> yes. I've got a question. Chief. 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 The, would that reflect to replacing the person you think you need the who was the long-term office assistant, the person, the administrator who? No, was the this is not a city manager. Okay. Okay. That's is that, not, is that a person that's not an administrative assistant? We do, but for for these purposes, we didn't we didn't put it into this. Okay, Mr. Kahn. But if I understand, Mr. Lindsay, that that's baked in here because it's this is out of the seventeen budget for personnel, correct? And they didn't have the administrative assistant or like a part time or an office manager, I think, baked into their 2017 budget. We don't have that. We do not. So that was left out of the projections. Okay. And what we tried to do is take the current model as it exists today, and they are desperately trying to fund that other position. So we included it to say if we're going to meet the demands of the current model, and that's why it's like, are we prepared to meet it? Will our future, you know, does this model work, and are we going to continue the model? And that's what we base the assumptions on. So we have a few others. We go through the others. And so that's just a projection from wages and benefits and, and what that looks like. Um, if we look at fire funding in, in your packet, the first one you had assumes that their funding would increase um, because taxable value increases at a rate of like 1.5% per year. Um, as you're well aware, when you look at the projections that they made in 2010 when they were putting this together, I think they did a, a really good job of putting them back together. 
of course, nobody knew that the Great Recession was going to be as steep or as long as it lasted, and we lost a tremendous amount of taxable value, which greatly impacted what their projections were. In fact, in the um, inside the packet also, there's a copy of minutes from 2011. That was after the village had been passed, and they, you, the city and township were working together, putting their assumptions together. Um, I think that's kind of telling as well. That talks about okay, the village has passed. You know, this is how we're going to move forward. Nobody could have anticipated that the taxable value loss um, just in real property, and commercial property. Uh, and we continue to battle it today. It's important to remember, like with the personal property tax that uh, the folks in Lansing have picked out of our pockets for the next five or six years, that money's going to go away and it's not coming back. And it reimburses us through the essential services. I think we got ours in February. It's $15,000 what the city got last November. Um, but it's nowhere near makes up for what the millage uh, losses have been due to the tax value. We're at 80 percent of where we were in 2007. 80 percent taxable value. We built 100 new residential homes every year for the last four years. We had 35 million dollars in commercial uh, additions last year in taxable value, and we're still at 80 percent of where we were in 2008. So, because it's a millage-driven revenue budget, uh, you've got to understand that those projections that they made in 2010 were probably good projections, but nobody could have anticipated that we. So me putting this out here through 2030, again, I don't have a magic eight ball that tells me I'm getting it right. I did it at 1.5 percent. If we if we leave the funding as it is, it's at a half a mil and a half a mil match out of our general fund. We're really talking about a one mil. We're funding our fire operations for the entire community at one mil. If we continue to do that out at 2030, and we are able to grow our taxable value and increase our millage capture by 1.5% per year, we would be able to get that revenue up to 1.577. Um, if we keep on looking, knowing that what just happened with wages and benefits, and Scott, if you would go to this one right here. Thank you. If you look at that bottom line, it's showing the traje trajectory. If we do nothing of where our funding level is, and at top being where our expenses will be, why do we have such a huge gap in 2017 when we know they delivered us a balanced budget? It has to do with the capital needs. And if you look at the projections that the fire uh, chief put together, it's the last page in your packet probably is a real eye chart. Um, we won't put it up, but it's, it shows you the trucks that are probably going to have to be replaced. Um, and that's still based it on a 20-year useful life. It's going to go in and show you uh, support vehicles, defibrillators, um, breathing apparatus, uh, turnout gear, pagers, hose, extrication tools, thermal imaging cameras, breathing compressors, and based on a useful life we came up with what an annual cost would be and that number came out to $368,643. If we want to be able to not bond or pull more money out of our general fund, what should we be given, what should we deliver to the fire commission so that we can pay for all of those things out through the 2030, it's going to be $368,000 a year. I think what's interesting in 2010, their projection was $347,000 per year is what they needed. And that's in those minutes from the 2011 meeting. They were projecting we were behind the eight ball, but we needed to make sure that we were putting capital money away for rolling stock and turnout year what we were supposed to be at that 346,000. I think this year with what Carl had projected to put over there we're still falling 107,000 short of that number and our projections are now that the new number is really $368,000 a year for uh, what we need just for these items of capital. It doesn't include building capital or anything else. Dennis, this uh so you know, this includes what, 20 year life expectancy on the equipment or 25? Or we get 20 years on the rolling stock. Yes. Which is probably at the extreme, I don't know, I believe that up to the chief, but. Yeah, the, the NFPA standards state, state that 20 years is the life expectancy of a frontline apparatus and then it's out of service. They're actually saying now do it 10 year increments and get newer, safer equipment in at 10 years. 
and be able to have some residual value in the equipment that you can sell. Right now we have a uh, pumper truck at our number three station that's been there for three years. It's been for sale for three years and we've not had any offers on it whatsoever. And insured. <laughs> and it's sure. What year is it? 1993. Got it for sale for three years. Yes. Okay. Um, so in looking at this, change to do, do the 10 year mark. All the vendors I've dealt with have said you're going to get a higher residual value, a resale value, and more apt to have people buy it than a 20 year old truck at a 10 year, 10 year mark. Do we want to run through any of the other three apps here? Well, I think if one note is like you look at 2030, what would be the difference? And again, I've included that capital need in there. You're talking about $447,500 difference out at 2030 that we would be underfunding our fire department at the current one mil funding level. Um, can you go to that next slide? And what this does is I just took the, if, if we decide going through that chart about who pays for what, if we decide that those major building repairs are going to get into the fire commission's budget like it, the ordinance currently reads, then what I did is just looked at what we spent over the last six years and took that average of $34,000. I put a 5% inflationary uh, increase on that across the span through 2030. And just to show you that then the difference becomes about $512,000 difference out at 2030 that we would be underfunding our uh, fire operations at the current uh, one mil funding level it shows that you know, we're $500,000 annually, $512,000 annually. Kind of give a, a rough idea of where we may need to talk about where the millage is going to go to unless we're going to change our operational model in some way. Yes, um, I have a question. So, have we put into this model if we do sell a truck? Uh, I mean, Carl was saying when I spoke to him that it was 15 years. Now it's in 10 years. So, I'm not sure exactly. But those are questions that need to be yeah, you, you sort of asked for value. But equipment. there's a potential value. How how great a value is that? Are we talking about hundreds of thousands? Or are we talking about tens of thousands? Or are we talking about thousands? Because that'll that'll skew this a, a little bit. I, and I think Possibly. it's a good point because what my conversations with Chief Burdett are, if you go the 20 years that we included in our projections, mm -hmm. when we're at the end of 20 years with that vehicle, it's kind of like the 93 pumper. We've had it out there for about 20 grand now, and it's been out there for three years, and we can't get anyone interested in it. When we use them for 20 years, it's about a zero residual value. Would it be a better model to go to 10 years or 15 years, keep a residual value that maybe it's worth something, we can move it, and that would lower our overall capital cost? Yeah. I think that's a great question there. I just, you know, so I it's think just, that's it's one of those things, because when we're looking at those ones, that might crunch that a little bit. It's some of those things that we need. <coughs> If we're talking about going forward and we're talking about asking for a millage of our communities, we've just got to have everything, all our ducks in a row, and what those possible costs could be. Because would, uh, be, would it be a potential savings of hundreds of thousands of dollars if we sold it at 10 as opposed to 20? To be honest with you, I wish I could answer that question for you. It, it's going to be in a ballpark around hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I don't have any depth. But it is going to make up for the half million no, dollar not. deficit no. by selling it by new We're going to buy new It's going to be easier to replace the equipment, be able to buy it faster. We're going to have to be able to use a million dollars to buy a new truck. Yes. Right, but if we have, again, if, if it's 200000 which was the number that Carl threw out to me, so I know nothing about the cost of trucks, except that we did save quite a bit on our last purchase. Um, that, that came down. First of all, we got a good deal on the Pierce Arrow, and then we got a better savings on it at the time. Who knows if that will repeat itself, but it's all those things that we do need to look at. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of things that we need to look at to go forward in, in, a, in a comprehensive way so that we can explain, if we're doing this, that we explain to our community what's going on. Because another question I would have is, you know, whether taking Keeping, we, we're, we're doing our six minutes, so we're doing that with three. So if we get four, do we need four? Can we continue that model without getting four? Can we get to that 
time frame, park is that time, getting to a fire going to increase over the years, do we need as many part-time? I, mean, I don't know the answers, but those are some of those things that we definitely need to look at, consider, and see how it changes these numbers, because, you know, it's a good place to start, but we've got a lot of work to do. Yes, Mr. Heiser? Yes, I do want to say that in terms of the valuation and the market value of the, of the major equipment that we have, we already have that information, depreciated debt book values that are accumulated, and I have that information, uh, you have that information, it's in the audit reports, and Yo and Yo has detailed analysis of what the equipment costs are and where we are. For example, if we took a look at a piece of equipment that right now could be at the 10 year or 15, if that, that would be a good value, we could look at what the determined net book value is as of the end of this year, and then see, for example, if we have a net book value uh, of $100,000 and the market value is $200,000 and they're, they're looking for equipment, I think that would be a trigger for us to say we've reserved more than enough, our market value is higher, and then we would have a procedure where this would trigger the sale of the equipment and identification of a new one. So we have the data, we have, we don't have to create anything that we don't already have, it's here, and I can put that together. So, very good. Any projections, mm -hmm. Chief? On you know, one of the questions was, you know, projected growth. I mean, you, you've seen growth in the township and Agit staff. Uh, well, here, make any projections? One of, one, of the, one of the concerns that I have is that where the number one station is housed right now in downtown. Uh, the part-time staff, when we have larger fires trying to come into the station, have difficulty getting there because of the traffic in the time frame. Is that play, uh, is station one an appropriate place right now? It's questions into the future. We're going to have to look at traffic patterns. What's the growth in the south end to the north end of the township? Uh, is it splitting stations apart and having maybe two man stations to run into the city? Um, if you look at the map that we have over there on the board, most of our calls that were in between eight to 10 minute response times are further out into the, into the community, which would naturally take place. Um, but if we were to maybe take a look at changing where the stations are placed, could improve our response times also. Are there, are there certain triggers that the population requires additional staff? Not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah. It, it's, it's time studies and, and uh, traffic patterns that you're looking for. Because we do have, Additional developments that are underway uh, in our township that are, are not near mm -hmm. the city necessarily, they're on the extremities of right. the township. Yeah, they're in the planning stages when it's started getting built, and man, they're actually, you know, they're obviously going to put a demand for services, just like what the police did when Walmart came in. It would be the same for us also. Probably we see the tech village and what we have on the plans there. Emerald uh, Falls is back under construction again, which is on the ball. Mm -hmm. so. Any other projections? That, oh. oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, I just want to, maybe I'm stating for the first time or just reiterating, we're making these projections on equipment, capital equipment. We don't know what new mandates the EPA is going to come through. And that's why a truck that cost us $450,000 in 2010 now cost six hundred thousand dollars now we've got to get urea tanks and stuff like that that we didn't that they just all of a sudden decide well every diesel truck has to have this now that's a major expense that we could not capture back when we started that dramatically increases the equipment and every year they're going to come out with new regulations that will put a higher cost on our vehicles Make sure we understand that. Yes. To Todd's point, as long as it got brought up over here, just from a historic standpoint, the 2000 or the 1993 Pierce that we're mm -hmm. talking about here that they've got for sale, myself and Chief Harms, and I looked over here and I don't see the two firefighters that went over there with us because I'm older than dirt now. <laughs> you know, we went to uh, Wisconsin and actually drove that truck back because we saved on the delivery. Right. Bob, you may have been one of them. You're old as me. So. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> doing that. You know, I don't know. First but reminder was the what, why, My he point is cry. this. Uh, we developed, Jeff Hardy, City Councilman Jeff Hardy and myself, uh, developed the original, the first vehicle replacement schedule, right? We bought that pumper for about $200,000. Yes. We built a 3.5% 
CPI was running around two and a half to three, so we built a three and a half cushion. If everybody, anybody in finance knows that three and a half percent money doubles in 20 years. So that means that we anticipated replacing that truck in 2003, 13, at $400,000. You guys took delivery in 15 of a pumper identical to that, other than, as Todd has said, the, the regulations and standards, for about $750,000. Mm -hmm. So we only missed it by $350,000. <laughs> I'm just saying, as we're doing, this is a great thing, right? But keep in mind, and, and Todd hit that right on the, on the nail on the head there. You, you, we just, we got to do our best, but even with that schedule that we didn't have prior to that, right? In, in the township and the city both had to really choke on when we went to them and said, look, you got to start putting this much more in. We never had a vehicle replacement fund uh, at that, before that. And, and it's still sh really short, right? It's really short. So, anyway. Very good point. Ms. Lane? I'm going to play the mother role here because I have a son that is a full-time firefighter. You can talk about equipment, and I want them to have the best. But more importantly, I want those men and women going home to their families safe. And I know it takes a certified driver and a firefighter to move any truck out of any building. And they have to stay outside of every fire unless there are two others there to go on in. So I'm not ever, I will be the mother bear and you're between me and my cub if you try to cut any firefighter because as I tell them, they are the cheapest thing dollar for dollar of any service we offer. <laughs> because they go all the time. Even if God called them first, they'd say, sorry, I've got a fire. <laughs> my grandson is just putting stuff on my time. Our, Sorry, but our, I believe it was the mayor that was mentioning do we need, did we need a fourth full time fighter or stay with the three? I'm, I don't mean to speak for you, but I don't believe she meant that we go down to not having a full staff in the building. I believe her intention was we just use full time firefighters part-time, excuse me, paid on calls to supplement like we are today. That's, I'm, I'm just yeah, asking that's, why that's there are ways. I'm just clarifying no where this one yeah. individual yeah. in this room stands. I can't, like I said, I can't speak for her, but I, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain I can speak for this. I'm not content to go down. I'd like to expound on something that Mr. Carl said, if I interpret it correctly. Did you say that it appears that the millage is going to have to increase from where it is today? going forward for the next few years? For the next 10 years, yes, we have to. <clears throat> and there's no if, ands, or buts. Five years. No, I understand. Five years, based on our performances, we've managed to go forward, and we've accomplished a lot in terms of the missions and so forth. <clears throat> but with the 10-year projection, which I agree, you know, uh, we're going to have to go up. It's as simple as that. I can't determine what, what exactly that is, um, but it's, it, it's the very least is one. That's, but I don't even vote on it. I'm just giving you the opinion. You know, oh, you'll so. vote on it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't vote on it. <laughs> oh yes. Jeez. You live in the township. You vote on it. <laughs> there you go. Any other projections, Dennis? That uh, we have that. No, I, I think you'll see, I mean, there's some graphs that weren't included. I mean, it just showed the operational costs again based upon uh, a one and a half percent annual increase. And, you know, you heard Trustee Kent. I, mean, I, I try to be as conservative I, as I possibly can be on inflationary pressures on what it's going to do with costs as well as from labor and, and, and health care. I mean, you, you guys all know sitting at this table, I project a 4% increase in health care for the next 13 years. I think it will be 18% <laughs> next year. I mean, I, I don't know where that again may be. You know, Trump care will give us all free health care forever. We don't have to worry about it. We just save a bunch of money. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I base it on what I think is a pretty conservative 4% increase per year. You'll see, you know, one of the sheets in there is the equipment in the annual capital reserve. You'll see when I took the 368 and I ran it across. Just to show that where our purchases would be at a given year, 
um, where we would have to actually put some money out. But, you know, I think that we could control it this way, and, and then we're not going to have to go out and bond uh, funds and have debt service on that. That if we are able to get to the point where we can set our capital reserve where it needs to be, that we could actually manage this without having to add additional debt service to it, which would be bonuses instead of looking at a, you know, oh no, we got to buy a $1.1 million truck. Um, now what? Ms. Lane, um, you had mentioned as far as when this would need to be on our ballot in order to. Uh, Depends on when you want it to go on the ballot. My opinion was, and as a clerk, we don't like specials, but um, we have to renew the millage by 2019. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's good to go on an August or a November ballot when we're at the bottom of the state and everybody else's ballot question and renewals for the county. So I personally am willing as a clerk to have what I call a May special election in 2018 and, and say to the people, we're grand blank. We want the best and put the millages because we have a mosquito millage that has to go on the ballot next year. I'm saying put Grand Blank first and vote for our fire department and if in we were, our case, if, if, I'm just, I'm just asking that February. question because I'm, I'm just looking at our next meeting and when we want to have that in time. May, others may have other opinions, but I know you wanted to ours the earliest. And in order to have it on May, February. you would need to have language. a language submitted by February. So right. I'm just giving people a perspective of where other people may feel differently that doesn't need to be on until later. But Mr. Buzak? Yes, I just asked Mr. Laddie because I thought Mr. Laddie was working on that to determine because there was a, a difference in the timing between the city and the townships. Right. And I thought exactly. you said, could you go and do that for us? Please? Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Griffin and I will have to get together and, and uh, pour over the taxation statutes because we, we have to make sure that we're, we're if, if we're a tie barred again, we have to make sure that that mm -hmm. our collections, that we have different collection dates and different levy dates between a city and a township. And, and so what we need to do is make sure that we give each municipality the opportunity to meet whatever timing requirements exist. And so what that what I'm suggesting is, I'll, I'll have to contact Mr. Griffin very soon so that we can um, go over our options or limitations as far as a tie bar <coughs> and, a, and a future collection. But what I, what I do want to say is that this has to happen very quickly. We have to, we have to understand what our millage target date is very quickly, and, and from a legal perspective at this point, just based on what I've been able to research, we're, we're going to need to probably consider on the township side something earlier than the last available or the second to last available. So, um, and again, I'll, I'll dig into it a little more with Mr. Griffin, and we'll make sure that we, uh, we give you plenty of buffer. But I would say, my suggestion is that even though Kathy, for different reasons, has suggested being prepared to go as early as May of 18, I think we need to we need to act with that haste. Uh, and whatever it is, it is, whatever amount it is. But I want to make sure that, that we're able to take the time, pick the election we want, make sure we've got our levy dates proper, and move forward. Mr. Thomas? Mr. Heiser and uh, Superintendent Mehmet up. What I've looked at in all of our paperwork, and this is a number that I've kept in the back of my mind, and I think I'd like to get your ideas, but one and a half mil, would that do it? On the long end, I have to study the reports that were given me here. I'm at one right now. I want to look at the projections. I just received this package today, and believe me, I'll go over it. Yes. One with no, no, no I just yes. want to clarify, you're saying one with no match, or? Oh, I'm one saying one and a half total, I'm not match. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking Mr. Heiser what he was suggesting. Is that with a half mil match, or from uh, Let me re Yeah, it would be with the, the half plus another half, and the contributions would remain the same from the township and the city. <clears throat> so, so you're saying one mil for the city, Millage, one mil for the township, millage, a half a mil from the city contribution, and a half mil from the township, right? Yes, so that's what I, yes. So it's, we're, we're talking about oh, three one. mils. No, one, one and a half. half. One and a half. 
one and a half to go. That's the number that I've got in my mind, but one and a half to go. Everyone pays so that's one and a half. Oh, yeah, okay. For each, each for every yeah. Everyone pays yeah. so okay. every taxpayer pays so no one and a half. No one and a half. So that's the number that you have in your head, too? Yes. Mill and a half, Dennis? I'm sorry, Superintendent, leave it up. So I would say that, yeah, uh, one and a half mills would certainly um, get it on, on uh, the conservative projections that are put out there. But again, I think it needs, I put these together so that we had some talking points to move forward. I think that we need to dive into a little bit deeper and look at projections. Um, I think other people are going to have some opinions on where my assumptions were and if they were too conservative or if other things are too aggressive, I don't know. But uh, I, I think it, based on this, you know, we're talking 512,000, 13 years from now, there would be a shortfall at our current funding level. Uh, you know, which is a half a mil. We're funding it at one mil right now. Additional half a mil would certainly allow us to have that with a, a, a minor cushion. Mr. Massey? Then when we talk about millage, <coughs> I think one thing we all should keep in mind is what the residents bear. It may not be, it may not necessarily be what we want, but what do we think they want? Hope for. Just a thought. Yeah. Well, and again, it depends on what we put in the budget. If it's uh, you know, capital expenditures, they're going to be part of the fire budget, or what do you have? So, yes, I'm here. So, I'm understanding this that one of the things on the table now is that we don't go for a renewal because the renewal will not cover us, and we're going for a new, a new one mill millage and the possibility of that when we look at the numbers we all digest it we all come back together and say this is what we're you know what's palatable to each community but that's what we're looking at we're not looking at a renewal or are we looking at putting a millage on and if that doesn't pass we still have time to run a renewal can we do that Walter, you can split it. <coughs> well, I'm saying if they're talking about, they're, they're talking about, they're saying we're, we're going, let me explain this because I want Walt's input here. We're saying that what we're talking about here is a new millage. We're not talking about a renewal because that's off the table because we can't add anything. The renewal is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. 0 0.5, you know, a 0.5 mil is the renewal of our 10 year. That's true. Okay. What they're talking about, as I'm understanding, is a new millage. It so, increased. It's an increase in the millage that we presently have. Well, that's right, but it'll be, it'll be a new millage. It'll be a new millage. It'll be a new millage. So it'll be, yes. well, we're not asking, saying, well, you paid 0.5, and then that'll be the talking point. But we're saying to the community, we're asking you for one mill, and we're going to be the talking point. But we're saying to the community, we're asking you for one mill for fire. Let's just say. Well, no, you're the paying a mill right now. You're no, 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 you're not. Yeah. Millage is 0.5. It's 0.5. No, but it's still point. It's still a mil because you're paying half percent out of your general fund and a half percent on the mill, which makes one percent. Well, wait right? a second, but the total, the, the total is that, right? Are you? Well, I want to. Well, I'm not talking about matching. I'm not no. talking about no. using any of our general fund money. I'm just saying a mil and a half, and then you guys flip. You know what I'm saying? All together. Well, I'm trying to understand what you're saying because I what I'm saying what is, I'm saying. maybe Scott. Here, I'll, let me see if I have this right. But I think we're we're talking the same thing here. That uh, I think what's we we don't know what what the total is going to be. We need to crunch some more numbers. We need to figure out where we are in capital expenditure and what have you. But I think what we're talking about, you know, that was thrown out. Let's put it that way. Okay. Is that a taxpayer, regardless of whether they live in the city or the township, would pay? A mill is what was thrown out. Right. And then the contribution from the township would be half a mill, and the contribution from the city would be half a mill. Which comes out to one and a half. But I would hate to say mill. that that's a cut in stones if it were not the contribution, that's where it's at. All together, you would have. And whether you call that a renewal or a new or whatever, that's right. what we're it's, it's not. It's not a renewal, though. I mean, that's new. one thing right. that we need to understand. Yeah. I want to. Your yes. understanding, David? Yeah, the, verbiage, yeah. the verbiage on the ballot, because we are not saying a half a mil, will say to the people on the streets, we're asking for a mil. And then when you start saying, but it's only a half a mil increase over what you're paying, you know they're going to be confused. 
but the ballot language, because you're going, if we decide to go for one mill from the voters, we'll say a new one mill levy. The other option is go for a half a mill and then play around and have a separate half mill, new millage, and start playing that game over the next 20 years and have to have two questions on the ballot all the time until they end at the same time and then they're both I'm redoing. just asking the question. You're right. I'm no, just no, saying right. if we did this in 2018 yeah, as a new millage, that's right. okay? Right. That's a new millage. If it should go down, we still have the renewal possibility, because we haven't renewed it, for 2019, because otherwise we have a fire, we, we have nothing. We, we don't have to worry about lines going down. Well, well that's, what I'm, but that's what I'm asking. We would have to do that. We could do that. We could ask what I'm asking you is we could go for an increase, and if it failed, we could go for a renewal. Um, okay. I'd like to ask Mr. Lavi. I think he had the answer for us. Well, no, and the mayor's correct. It would, we, and we would. So, if, for example, you went for a mill, which would be an increase over what we currently had, mm -hmm. um, it would be it would read on the ballot as an increase. Um, you would have an opportunity to try again with that mill, or some lesser amount if you wanted, uh, in a subsequent election if you wanted to. Though, I don't think it, I think we've got to make sure that we don't consider it just a situation where if the mill, if we, if we propose the mill and it fails, that we just automatically drop back to the half mill because based on the projections we've seen, it won't work. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. Right. Okay. I'm just asking if we do that, we have the option, if it was a huge failure, <laughs> that we could go for a half mill because Something is better than nothing because we're going to be left with a lot of nothing if we don't have any millage. I've got, a, right. I've got a question to tack on to that. Is that with regard to tie bar? Um, can you explain what that means uh, and why we would do that or why we, is it necessary? Well, what we did, and, and this this is, I don't want to get into to history that's not just particular to the fire uh, commission, but we, we tie bar them so that. Based on the idea that each resident of the city and the, and the township would pay the same millage, and, we, and, and again, recognize that we have this joint enterprise, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have uh, one of these uh, millages pass in one entity and fail in the other and cause a, a pretty difficult imbalance to overcome. The problem, though, is that when you tie bar them, you've cast your fate to both municipalities, and God forbid if it fails in one and passes in the other, then then you don't, you don't have a financial problem to solve. Uh, you have a planning and a, a contribution problem to solve. So we, we felt initially that the tie bar was the way to move forward and to make people understand that their contributions are relatively the same. And I think that that concept has worked relatively well, and it, and it would seem to me you'd want to explore that process again, um, again with a couple of technical issues that Mr. Griffin and I have to talk about. Tie bar just means has to pass. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. right. It's not tie bar, passes one, dies in the other. You have a political problem. And uh, just one. historically speaking, I, I don't know if, how long everybody has been here, but we had the Parks and Rec Mill, which is what brought all of this together for tie barring because the millage passed in the city and did pass in the township. And it was, you know, it, it took a lot of time to work that out to everybody's satisfaction, which I think we did, to everybody's credit. But that's, that's one of the reasons, historically, that we tie bar so that we don't get into that kind of a situation again. Okay. We've done it. Well, we, we've discussed a lot this evening, and uh, I don't know that we came up with any solution right now, but uh, we put some information out and uh, put questions out there that I think our board needs to go back and, and look at and examine. And, uh, is there anything that we didn't discuss that we should have? Uh, we we're looking at future meeting dates. Uh, I think we should talk about Flint water now. <laughs> uh, looking at future meeting dates, uh, I think uh, we had spoke about uh, what we were looking at for our next meeting. 
Well, we can, we've talked a little bit about um, a task force, but with all the information that's come by, I think we need to go to our each group and discuss all of this, bring all of this to, you know, for our whole council to hear, your whole board to hear, and then get back together to hash out where where we stand. I, I think actually a task force yeah. wouldn't do us any benefit. We had, what the mayor's talking about is that we have, at one of our breakfast meetings, we had uh, discussed the possibility of having a couple of uh, township board members, a couple of city council members uh, meet to go through some of these things. Uh, and but also, we need. We were talking about a future meeting for discussing parks and rec being the next joint venture that we need to take a look at. Except, I, I guess at this point, there's so much on the table with this, and if we're talking about a deadline that needs to be met, the others have have managed to go on for you know quite well, a few years. Yeah. I think we need to take care of this, and we need to sure. take care of this together. Right. Well, what I, I was going to mention is. So we, were, we were looking at June for our next meeting and covering parks and rec, but what we could do is, is cover fire at that June meeting. If yeah. June still works. Does June sound like a reasonable time frame for the board? Let's pick a date and let everybody look at their calendars, because otherwise we're better. The fourth, the fourth Thursday of the month would be the Thursday that we do trades. Could we alternate? Uh, when we do do our meetings on Wednesdays. Could we do an alternating basis? We can do a Wednesday meeting because I set aside most of my Wednesday nights for the city council. Is, is Thursday not a good night for you, John? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, okay. Thank you. Even in the summer? <laughs> absolutely. Especially. So, what are we looking at, then? Uh, is this May or June? What about the 21st? Because that, um, that's our, we have your kids. I can't, no Wednesday. No Wednesday. That's Cub Scout. But I could bring my Cub Scouts. Yeah, it would be good for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I think the last week of June. Or for the government match. No, the Cub Scouts not for June the 19th, is that a good day? That's not a Monday. No, yeah. it's a planning commission. So what? That's planning commission for us. Well, Tuesday. What about the 26th? It's a Monday. Okay, 26th. Only once. How does the 26 work? Okay. That's the night before our decision to do the 26th. We're too close, John. John, we're too close. We're saying so far Monday, June 26th, 6.30 at the Senior Center. Is that, will that, can we make that work? Yeah. Well, thank you for you, Mr. Supervisor. Okay. Haven't heard any negatives, and they've had enough time to. <laughs> June the 26th. Okay. Thank you. Then let's do the 26th. Six thirty. It's not late. Yes, same time. We have to check in to see if the senior center is available, right, James? Yeah. And I, I appreciate the graciousness of the mayor to allow me to, to run the meeting, and we'll flip, we'll flip flop. Uh, at our next meeting. Yes. For the next meeting, what should we call the other order to come there? So that would be helpful if we had to ask you something to put that together and we've done our work. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the agenda we have for the meeting uh, roughly outlines, I think, we I think we agree that the current model of our operation, you know, with, with uh, paid on call and full time, has been successful in reducing our, our times. Yes. So I'm not sure we need to have that on the agenda, but and the goals, we you know, I think we agreed the goals have been achieved. Um, but I think everything from there down is, is pretty much the topics. I might be wrong, unless there's something we need to add. But from like uh, item 4C down, I guess is probably unanswered questions, right? Yes. Right. Yes, that's right. So I think. That's our list of things to work on. We'll be able to come back and have some maybe some consensus from our board as far as our position is going on that. We have who's in control of what building? Who's in? Yeah, and if that's is that the responsibility of the, the commission 
for each individual municipality. And the biggest thing is to look at all the numbers and see what we all think about uh, for a millage and what we think individually is a millage that, you know, are we for a millage, against a millage, or how much? I think those are the, those are the critical points to come back with. To talk about and the numbers has yeah, the numbers that we have are, are numbers that uh, that mr heiser and our, our chief have come up with so uh, we all have the same numbers that we're operating off of so well if we have any questions we can ask and get back right. to each other saying that oh we clarified right. this and that's not right so if somebody you know has a different projection but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that uh, you know the mayor and i will be meeting and uh, talking for our next meeting, so that people yeah, have sure. new information or we can have new information. Mm -hmm. we'll that needs to be shared, shared so we're all on the same page. Okay. 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 All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, motion to second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.